This forest of touch sensors allows us to respond instantly to whatever's happening around us. But they're not evenly distributed beneath our skin. Our hands have a hundred times as many sensors per square inch as the back of our legs. They're placed where we need them most. If size went by sensitivity to touch, our bodies would look something like this. Tongue and lips twice as big. The same with hands, fingers, and feet. Other senses have different patterns. Sensors for heat are most dense in our fingertips, nose, and strangely, our elbows. They play a critical role. When we're pushed to the limits, they might just keep us alive. All over the human body, every second of every day, nerves carry sensations to our brains. Even when we don't realize it, these signals control how our bodies function. When it gets hot, sensors and nerves work together to keep us alive. The deep Australian desert can reach 130 degrees. It's no place to get stranded. But that's what happened to Matthew McGough and his daughter Shannon, more than a hundred miles from the nearest town. It's so hot here that a cut of beef left outdoors would roast in less than four hours. Yet Matthew and Shannon are still alive eight days later. Moments after their pickup truck breaks down, their bodies go into action to hold their core temperature at about 98.6 degrees. It's all thanks to hundreds of thousands of tiny heat sensors and the cooling system they trigger. When our skin heats up beyond 93 degrees, sensors signal our brain. Its central thermostat uses other nerves to start the cooling process. One hour later, both of them are sweating profusely. There's no more efficient way to cool the body. Beneath our skin lie over a million tiny sweat glands. When we heat up, our blood vessels dilate, bringing blood and heat to the skin surface more quickly. The sweat glands extract water from the blood and release it into the open. As it evaporates, it cools us. Under ordinary conditions, we produce about two pints of sweat a day. But in extremes, we pump out a lot more. This guy's churning out heat as he runs, and what's more, the room temperature is being increased at the same time. The amount of sweat you're producing, but more importantly evaporating, is just enabling you to release the amount of heat and lose the amount of heat from the body that you're producing through exercise. We're seeing no increase now in the uh, sweat production, which suggests to us that you're sweating at about your maximum rate. The man's near the sweat limit, four pints an hour. But the water has to come from somewhere. The human body is 75% water. To survive, our vital organs need their share of that fluid. Normally, we have enough to spare for the cooling system. Provided we keep the body filled up. After four days in the Australian desert, Matthew and Shannon have run out of water. Losing as little as 3% of the body's water can cause cramps, headaches, and disorientation. They're so dehydrated, they start to hallucinate. The heat itself, the heat plays tricks on your mind. Trying to keep your mind on the job of surviving and getting out of things and getting things done and this, that and everything else. Now, their bodies must respond to the water loss. 
To keep the body's vital organs supplied, the brain fights back with a surprising response. Overriding the body's thermostat, the brain orders the sweating to stop. The sweat glands drain dry. Next, nerves signal other parts of the body to suck water back into the heart, lungs, and kidneys. The blood thickens and coagulates. Water is absorbed from the large intestine, causing constipation. Even the eyes dry out. We had a, a good cry together about, you know, whether we'd see Christmas or not, or whether Shannon would see her mum again or whatever, you know. And um, if, if we'd have had the moisture in our body, there would have been plenty of tears, but there was none, so, you know. I can, like, remember how, like, your mouth's all dry and you can't really, like, swallow because there's, like, nothing there to swallow with. Your tongue's like having a brick in your mouth. Shannon and Matthew are near collapse, but instead of cooking in the heat, the network of sensors beneath their skin has kept them alive for over a week. They survive because their bodies balanced the need for water and the need to keep cool. Their brains even trigger one final instinct. They just manage to dig in, insulating their bodies from the searing desert. It's enough to save their lives. Just jumped up out of the ground and started waving my hand, hands frantically. And he had um, lots of nice cold rainwater on board, eh? That was good. <laughs> yeah, and I grabbed this bloody great big jerry can full and <laughs> upended it and went straight through us. But yeah, it was good. It was nice, cool, cold, clean rainwater. It was awesome. Yeah. Our body's temperature responses can be the difference between life and death.